we see kind of a new leaf turned over for both teams. Yeah, both these teams are kind of struggling with what I would say is identity crisis in terms of what they're going to do. Exactly. Because Optic Gaming, they had a change up in the roster. They have their intended starting five here. They're 0-4 with this roster, and the shot calling has been an issue for them. They've gotten first blood in every single game. They have the best goal leads at 15 in the entire league. This is the best early game team. It's just the shot calling to close games out is something that they haven't had come together. But with 100 Thieves, think of last year. They won their games off of 1-3-1 one, one, meticulous mm -hmm. macro plays with Cody Sun being the late game carry. Games aren't going as long. The 1-3-1 one, one isn't as prevalent. So 100 Thieves also need to find a way to play League of Legends that is successful for them. So both these teams, I'm watching the shot calling. I'm watching the style that they pick up here, especially from Champion Select. And someday getting his first pick of Urgot as we expect it to go towards that top lane. He has been a pivotal player here for 100 Thieves, forcing the smites on opponents, making sure that top lane is locked down. And we'll have to see what Optic can answer with, knowing that Urgot had to go over with what they were deciding to ban out in priority. Graves is being hovered right now. Medios going up against 100 Thieves for the first time in that revenge game. And what will he get to play in the jungle? Looks like Nocturne. He's been on that Olaf run the past few days. Yeah, Nocturne has been banned a lot, and Aatrox actually picked up here. We've seen Aatrox Ooh. resurge mostly as a jungler over in the LCK, a few times over here in the LCS, but this looks like it'll be top lane or mid lane after the changes slash nerfs to him. Still a pretty aggressive fight composition to kind of Bass Brothers in together. Yeah, and it's interesting as well because now you have to watch out for something like a Shen. Shen synergizing very well with the Nocturne. Oh. And it means that if the Aatrox gets an advantage in the side lane, like Doklo was playing with Split Push back when he came into the league the first time for Optic last year, that means that they would have a Nocturne shadowing the Aatrox, but they would also have a Shen shadowing it as well. So I'm watching for that pick in particular here to come out to see if they're going to go with a semi-global composition. Waiting for the final pick here. They've already mismatched the lanes. The bangs are def or sorry, bands are definitely going to be towards that mid lane on the side of Optic towards 100 Thieves. The Tom Kench comes in actually. Something Alpha Moo is getting uh, some play time on. We've seen the Orn, the Thresh, and the Braum a lot from Big, but this is a takeaway and a pretty good play for him. And it's one of Big's best champions. Mm -hmm. We think about how he goes around with the semi-global ultimate. This is another champion that can allow for pretty fast rotations. And it allows you to play things in the bottom lane that yeah. aren't usually uh, safe. Things like the Ash you get your eyes on. Even Draven is another champion that you can play in the bottom lane here against the Ezreal in particular and have safety for him come mid game, come late game, right. where normally people just dogpile on top of him. Silas is actually banned away. Make sure that Urgot's not going anywhere else. What will we have from the side of 100 Thieves? Probably looking on behind his team. They decide to start going for Arrow. We saw him on that Callist last week. Not having the best of time. So, like I said, looking at both Bang and Arrow this match to see if those 80 carries can step back up. And do some good for that bot lane. Final bans here from Optic coming in with 11 seconds left. What do they feel is most prioritize the ban here away from 100 Thieves, and it's the Elise now. Hmm. There's a lot of champions that can be played in the jungle. Yep. The Olaf, you know, you can power farm up against the Nocturne, do quite well. The Elise is one that they just don't want to have the kind of dive potential where you can go after a top laner or a mid laner very early on. And for 100 Thieves, I think the Draven should be the last ban here if they're afraid of bottom lane ah. carries. I like it. Also, that pick for Onda on Elise would be huge. He loves to get in the other jungler's face, watch where their pathing is, get in that top lane, like you said, real quick in the early part of the game. He won't be able to do that now. And Zillion banned away as well from 100 Ds, so you yeah, can get these pretty long and stent extended fights that you would from getting rezzed. And there's a the Draven you said they should be banning. It may be the pick that Arrow feels like could carry that bot lane through this game. Yeah, Draven emerged as an Ezreal counterpick when Ezreal became very popular, but they're just going to pivot away from it and go, hey, it's for the wave clear, it's for the team for fighting the team. later. That's a great so, point. And if they have a kind of AD in the top lane, AD in the jungle, they're going to need wave clear. So I guess this takes care of that and allows them to go for whatever they want in the mid lane here so Crown can have you know, his pick of the litter. Super safe bot lane from Optic as well. A Tom Kench and a Sivir. You have the Spell Shield, you have the Devour. They can actually get themselves into quite a bit of trouble before needing to back out and get to safety. What's the final pick here for 100 Thieves with a Lissandra showing as well for Hoovy in the mid lane? 
Aphromoo is going to find that selection for Onda. They're actually leaving the jungle to see the entirety of the composition, and they go for Olaf. That's that pick that Meteos has been playing quite a bit, but decided for his Nocturne in this game. Yep. Final selection for Optic. Olaf has a little bit more of that early presence. He's very good at just clearing the jungle, power farming, and then Predator mm -hmm. ganking. And Meteos on the Nocturne, he'll have some power in the early parts of the game, but the dueling is pretty even, I would say. And then it gets to a point where the Olaf level six can do a lot of damage to the Nocturne, avoid his fear. And the Nocturne really just becomes this guy who's going to pivot to side lanes. And that seems to be the name of the game here, is just side lane play for Optic, trying to look for more of a macro focus game here with three semi-global ultimates and somebody who can actually piggyback in the Tom Kench. Yep, this is going to be Medios' first Nocturne game coming into the spring split here on Optic. We'll see a lot for Onda. He's been there a bit, so he knows what he's doing on the champion. Medios will be going in, kind of a wait for six composition they'll be going for as they farm out the bot lane and get themselves set up, but they have the good early game we were talking about. They usually win those lanes. Can they extend that lead once they hit six? Yep, and once they get that like advantage at 15, once they start mm -hmm. getting those ultimates online, can they start pivoting to side lanes? And now you have to watch Dokla on that Aatrox versus the Urgot. How is this matchup going to go for him with the chain slash nerfed Aatrox in the early parts of the game? Yeah. Because if they are looking for a Nocturne, a Rise, and potentially Tom Kench to visit that lane, someday has his work cut out for him. Looking at where else they can go. Is this a lane as we see Huhi roaming early? And which way would he be going? Well, Puhi's got Teleport, and he's got the Lissandra. If he's able to wave clear early, which he usually can in this matchup, he can go to that bottom side. I would expect him more to go towards the top against the Aatrox, but he can go bottom, and, you know, it's hard to kind of get that Sivir, but feel like you're going to go towards the Aatrox, but you have options. If Optic takes this game, they will be tied with 100 Thieves. Optic on a five-game losing streak. 100 Thieves 0-2 on that losing streak currently. Both teams looking for a win here and someone will come away with it. Who wants it more? We're on the Rift. 100 Thieves versus Optic. Just a reminder that if Optic win this one, they tie 100 Thieves in the standings and have the head-to-head -head going into the second round robin. So these teams are neck and neck despite Optic's poor performance with that five game winning streak. All right, we are gonna get a quick sideline report from Avali. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Zaboutin. You told me earlier today that you don't think that the score truly reflects Optic's strength as a team, but why is Optic struggling so hard to close some of these games out? Uh, as we said, we uh, we have less preparation because of all the issues we had in the in the first part of the season, and we have small communication issues where like everybody's a little bit too friendly or excited when things are going well, and things are usually going well. So once one make a mistake and everybody wants to salvage the play and eventually it just goes worse than it should be. So yeah, it's like just time should fix it. But at the same time, we're already in week five. So it's, it, that's it. Time's running out. Well, Zavu team, thank you and best of luck to you today. Back to you guys. Well, it seems like they've gone wheelhouse champions with that time being so little, they're going to things that are comfortable, things they know how to play. Crown on the Rise can hold that lane by himself. As we said, safety for Optic's bot lane with Sivir for Arrow and Tom Kench for Big. And we'll have to see if Meteos on Nocturne and Dokla on that Aatrox can really get something going on the top side of the map too. I really like what Zabutin said there about you know, they get an advantage and they usually do have advantages, the best early game team right now. And once they have them, they get a little hyphy, they get a little frenetic when things <laughs> start going wrong and then people want to salvage the play to keep the lead and not fall behind and it makes them fall behind. So mm -hmm. that's actually something very specific to watch for here is when Optic, if they get a lead, how out of control do they get? Because he's saying you've got to practice restraint even if it starts slipping through your hands. That's tough because it's hard to pull back. It's hard to know when to keep going forward. The name of the game this time for Optic. We'll see if they can really put those fundamentals in order for themselves. Looking at what is going on on the other side of the map, that bottom lane bangs Ezreal. Alpha moves Braum going up against Arrow and Big. With Huthi and Alessandra, we said he'd be roaming a bit. Let's see if Anda on Olaf and Summit as well make something happen on the top side. Start things off. Pretty even CS. Nothing from the junglers on an early level two gank on any of the lanes here. Is it's free farming, Irene. Yep, it's uh, Medios going for a level three route for clearing the full top side. Was spotted by awards, so they know the route that he's going for. Mm -hmm. And the scuttle crab on the bot side, he'll be spotted as he comes around here. 
And that's something where Ando went for top scuttle, cleared full side of top, and now he's just going to give up this. So it is actually a full kind of gentleman's agreement to you take that side of the jungle and that scuttle crab, and we're just both going to full clear. So both junglers are content with that. So where is that first expectation for the agreement to break? When are you kind of outside oh, the lines? And you're like, now it's time to think of what I want to do. Well, that's the thing with the agreement is you both say, all right, you know, no rush, go level six. And <laughs> that's what happens with the Nocturne. He wants to get to level six. The Olaf wants to power farm, get a slight advantage because he's a little bit better in his yeah. clear speed. And then he's going to get the Predator boots after a back and try to gank through lanes or try to find a way in. So it's a gentleman's agreement until somebody decides it's not anymore, which is basically how it should always go. So there's, that's the thing is you don't know when it's going to end because it's up to both people when one of them will opt out of it. And I actually don't know which because if I'm Medios, I'm fine getting level six. If I'm Anda, I'm fine getting early farm on the Olaf to just right. slaughter laners. Mountain Drake is the first one, may not draw too much attention, but that bot lane is definitely somewhere we'll keep our eyes on. Two big voices as well, and Aphromu and Big with that Braum and Tom Kench, and these guys are ones that lead the team a lot. Aphromu spoke a little bit in the beginning of the losses of how he got quiet, and that's not good. When the captain gets quiet, the team kind of falls back a bit, so he's been working on that quite a bit this season. Big as well. We always know Big has a big voice. Yeah, no pun intended. This guy is always on top of the comms when you get into a huge fight. But that's where that's where 100 Thieves wants to win is in the big fight. And they got something yeah. to battle against with him on the other team. In big. But when you have somebody like Medios on your team too, you always have to think about how he's going to try to navigate Vision, how he wants to play the game. And right here, Medios is going to actually see... Actually, I don't think he knows that Anda's there. Anda's going to actually walk straight past and go for a gank on Dokla. There's that Predator buy you were talking about. No reckless swing yet, undertow attack. Medios is just gonna be off the side. Dustbringer comes down, but they instantly take down Dokla. I thought he had a bit of time to get out, but he didn't even have time to blink. First blood there to someday. And that's one of those changes to the Aatrox. You don't have two charges of your E. You only get that dash once, and especially early on, it's got such a long cooldown on it. You pop it, and you're pretty much just gonna have to walk and slink your way away. And yeah, he came right around. There wasn't a ward in that bush. Gentlemen's the agreement over. Yeah, and they were both on the same side of the map there, too. Medios are just going for the hard farm of the second Krug. And Dokla just gets slam dunked by Anda, and someday picks up the kill, which. We were talking, this is kind of the lane you want to pivot to with the semi-global composition of Optic. And now that it's upset in favor of Someday, that's going to be something where that lane is going to be constantly shoved in. Very, very big player to get going in the beginning of the game. Maybe some rinse and repeat for Onda here, but he's staying up in CS as well, right on par with Video, even having made the gank. Things are looking good for 100 D to start off. Bot lane's pushing for Optic and Bit, or Arrow and Big. So they can kind of have priority over that lane, but not much is going to come until we see Meteos hitting six just yet. Yeah, and the control for 100 Thieves has actually just been a bit better, ever so slightly. Yep. The ward that they had on Meteos at the top side, Krugs, level one, and then the ward that they had over there by the red buff is another one that will give 100 Thieves a lot of information here. So the warding from 100 Thieves is actually just flat out better in terms of map control early in this game. Kind of looking down the line to see what Optic has put in that marksman position. Even when we saw Asta, they only played uh, Asta, they only played Silver one. So Arrow kind of fitting that back into the comp. They feel like that mobility, being able to sort themselves out in the fight, is going to be what helps. And we've seen Arrow put those numbers up. He has. Just, it seems like him and Bang are having that kind of lull this year. Ooh. Yeah, Afro, that was interesting to see from him because uh, something that a lot of Roms will end up doing mm -hmm. is they fake out the Silver spell shield. You don't throw it at her you throw it to the side of her or you throw it at her enemy or her ally and you make it so that he blows the spell shield and doesn't get any mana back for it and the cooldown of it it's long. the cooldown of the Q is 7 seconds whereas the spell shield is 22 seconds so you can do it multiple times and if you get the spell shield out once then the Sivir has to play safe and you gotta do it different each time yeah. she's like now I know but then it's different you always got to be in the mind of the arrow this game. You're Aphromu on Braum. Yeah, and I actually just saw it again down bottom. It was really cute where <laughs> Aphromu threw it in front of arrow, and arrow purposely ran into it with the spell yep. shield up. So, mind games. Yeah, it's just nice little mind games that people play in the bottom lane. And Ooh. here, they know that Meteos is there. Meteos sees that his red is gone. Great he's like, hover. that's a nope from him. He's just, he's just out. Who he had a little bit of priority there, but it was definitely going to be an overall fight. I feel that Optic 
could have sorted out and got Moogie in a really bad spot. Teleports back to lane now. Ooh, looks like for bot lane, it's gonna be one back. We'll have to be careful here of the disjointed back. The arrow does have yeah. teleport, so expect him quick. They wanna make the a play bot. There's a level six there. They're looking as well. Aphromoo is five, Bang is six. They may be able to get in before he gets that ultimate down to use Glacial Fisher, and they're slowly waiting in the wing. Looks like they want the priority over lane to take the dragon. Ah. I like it. I like it for the later play. Yeah, and also who he doesn't have TP right now, so there's mm -hmm. no way he makes it here before Crown does. Crown has priority, and is on the top side of the map. And an early Mountain Drake, 3 14 minutes to help you get turret plates could be really good here to start getting a gold advantage because Optic are down 1k right now. Trying to serve it up. Arrow taking a bit of damage. Meteos is low. Takes up some honey fruit there for himself. Oh, Crown in trouble. Nice ring of frost onto Andy. He gets himself in for the damage. Crown oh. doesn't get the flash over the wall, and he's gonna be dead to rights. Flash and cleanse down for him, and Huhi coming up with a kill. No, that was actually Anda's kill as Huhi gets the assist, but good collapse as 100 Thieves played that one for the long con. They knew they could not, or sorry, Optic could not get out of the dragon pit that quick. Yeah, he was waiting for that too. Crown used the cleanse and flash, mm -hmm. but he's still not able to get over the wall. It's very close, but it's still a pretty thick wall, and he was far away from it, too. It's honestly uh, dropping the ball there on that. It's just awkward how they were trying to get out of that whole situation. Like, you're getting caught out here on the Drake. Meteos has to abandon. Crown gets slowed, rooted. He cleanses Ooh. before the ult. Oh, there it is, there it is. So he, wait, he's still, okay, yeah. So the animation is still on him but he is out of the ultimate after he flashes. I think Crown was saying the same yeah. thing you were. It looked Wait, really what? It looked really strange cuz he does cleanse, but he still has the yeah. ultimate animation on him. So it looked really weird, but he he flashed, he wasn't going to make it anyway. He attempted. So that's a flash blown in top as we see on the close there, as well as a flash blown as they catch Crown around the mid lane. An omnipresent Onda right now are really doing work for the team. We saw this on his Camille play as well on the Olaf. And towards the end of Worlds, this was a guy who was really stepping up in the jungle. And he's able to show a lot of little uh, spurts of light here and there for the team. That's yeah. a 2K gold lead now, 400 feet, 10 minutes. And he's got an interesting build going on here too. He's not completing the Warrior, the Cinder Hole, for whatever he wants on the Olaf. He's going straight for the phase, straight for a Black Cleaver, I would assume here for the Olaf, for the CDR, and just have the early access to it. That would be really nice for him, just chucking those axes constantly and having a large advantage in the jungle off that kill and assist he's got. Actually, when you look at Optic's team, they're quite safe. When you do start getting CC, not a lot of them have a way to get out of a sticky situation. They really need to be on the forefront of a fight to do anything well. 100 Thieves is not allowing that to happen right now. Rift Herald is going to be picked up just short of 11 minutes here by 100 Thieves. If they're a best lane for them to hit, they've got one shield or uh, armor down in mid, or you can work on the other ones. Oh. I feel like the top lane, because it's a mm -hmm. lane you have a large advantage in, and the way that they help it is they either bring their mid laner, but they can't really bring their bot lane right now unless they do a swap. So Zoklo would have to back and TP, and even then he might get dope. So he's going to have to stick around here, and that might be an all-in from someday. World enters in. You can still get a corrosive charge on and get that alt off when this wears, but a good distance has been created by Doklan. Now flashes there for someday. He's not going to have the range, though. He's just Arpa. playing bully. Gotta love this. He takes out the minions before they get to the turret. He is denying Dokla pretty hard now. 107 CS to 83 in top lane. Yeah, he is just denying him hardcore after what happened very early in the game with that level 4, level 5 gank that came out from Anda. Meteos nearby, so that really did shift it all. We'll see if Anda uses the Rift Herald here. Yeah, I think he is, yeah. So is that the regular way you'll see Scion to Aatrox lay out? Yeah, there was a bit of inter intervention in that lane, but we kind of saw Sunday winning against Dokla in the beginning. Uh, yeah, we saw that he was that the Urgot was able to push in the Aatrox, and that's normally how the range versus melee matchup would right. go. A little half. So you expect that, but then the fact that it was in a middle point in the map, and blue versus red side here, it's easier to just wrap around the red side top laner because of the tri brush, right? It's the same thing with bottom lane, but the opposite. So you wrap around the top side, and then he's able to just pick him up there. But they do get that first turret. They get so much in the pockets of something okay. here. He's sitting on 2,600 gold. When you get all of the plates off of a turret, you are just rolling around in money. Quickly making work of the top side. 100 Thieves now having a chance to rotate around the map in this kind of 
makes it really great for that teleport composition because they can start to spread optic very thin. Three teleports across the map and a global ultimate as well, and bang, so he can participate from wherever he is. Looks like 100 Thieves is going to start working that now. Still back to top side, however, for Someday and Onda, so it looks like they'll keep Dokla in top lane. Maybe they'll be fighting for me. Yeah. See. Crown not doing too bad, 121, 127, as he did go down getting caught off of his lane when they went for Dragon just earlier in the game. It looks like he is still trying to make plays here, get information so plays can be made. His Optic falling short in one of those games where, well not one of those games, but in a the game they usually have leads by 15 minutes. Yeah, it's the first time they haven't gotten first blood. They were eight for eight, now That's they're eight point. for nine, and they're behind coming into the 15 minute mark. It would take a miracle for them to actually hit a gold advantage at 15 at this point. He's only got a minute and 30 left, and Mio's being collapsed on. Oof. Sorry, Zyrene. Most miracles happen on Sunday game days. So <laughs> this is going to be a tough one on Saturday. Good spell shield. Oh, he goes right oh! in the face. He says, this is my house. Thank you very much. Does he have a way out, though? Front door, back door, side door. Looks like he's going in the garage. I have no idea, but he <laughs> does get himself out. Squeaks through the window. Uh -oh. And someday, oh, he's making it right now day. It does not look like it's going to be good on this. He may get out. Afro is going to be there to shield him. Unbreakable's coming in as he's well. Fine. Bang's going to be there to help him. And ring around the Rosie. Someday gets out safely. President Someday. Everybody with the <laughs> escort just coming up like, right this way, sir, right this way. Gets out, and he's got a bounty on him, too. He's 2-0. Oh. Oh, they don't want him man. to fall behind or have the game kind of rubber back on. No, no, wait. They left the prison. Oh, he went all the way in. Wait, he's going to be able to deny vision. He's got the stopwatch down. Crown now in the frying pan. Cooked up, and there's the ultimate across the map from Bang. Locked and loaded. Woo! So the whole team just being like, all right, Woo. someday's the bait now. And that was perfect. Oh, now they're going to be able to get this mid turret. They have demolish ready too so this is just more and more going the way of 100 thieves they are pummeling optic right now and even close more. your eyes optic it's not working he's gonna spit him out devour under the turbo looks like going for the full chase a nice block on the mystic shot by B. that's the play they needed to make a little more aggression here one more heated shot on the bang afro stopwatch is down and doklo with the one the two personally looking for the three doesn't have it and it looks like they're going for the bigger fight. Meteos going low here, and somehow 100 Thieves has each other's backs so well. And that right there, that's going to be honestly the straw that I think breaks the camel's back because they committed yes. so much to that. Dokla comes in, TP, not able to get anything from that. Arrow still dies because of the Ignite just trailing off as he walks away. It gives a little bit back to... Uh, to Dokla in the top side early, but someday he's just able to equalize it right here. I gotta see this one more time. What breaks the spell shield? You know what I just realized? Oh, it's too late. He does it too late. This fight went long enough for Meteos to be back in the fight on the bot side. <laughs> he dies there and he's back in the fight soon. Oh, someday. Oh, he's getting ahead of himself here. Trying to use too many legs at once, trips over himself as someday goes down. Crown. Big's gonna make it out alive. Crown. Giving himself the King Me on that one as he takes down Bang. And they just use teleports to get into that. So pretty good resources used by 100 Thieves. And a good point for Optic to pick up a bit of a win there. Yeah, and Optic now, they have a bit of an advantage on the map. But Arrow is going to try to get some more farm on the top side. They're looking for that Sivir win condition later on. And even though the gold is an advantage for 100 Thieves, and Optic have the man advantage on the map, it's still going to be 100 Thieves picking up this Drake just because of where Optic are. That was fiery from 100 Thieves. And Zyrene, we came into this game kind of knowing that Optic gets a lead. And then we kind of think, so if they have the lead, why don't they always win with it? And it's because we realize teams don't always have that idea that they have a lead. A lot of times it's visual, you have turrets mm -hmm. down, that's great to use. I think 100 Thieves here had that visual lead this time, and they have been using it. Here, Optic was able to bite back because 100 Thieves got a little ahead of themselves. Yep. TP in for Muhi, and then the bounces there from Crown, and then a oh. the perfect combo there. And that's a level 10 Rise running around there. So he, as he gets those levels, he's gonna do more and more damage. Still running around with the Merc Treads, doesn't even have penetration to boot. <laughs> he's gonna be good to go later. So they're looking at that Sivir to scale up, they're looking at that Rise to scale up for the late game here. So Optic are playing a little bit more for that. If they can calm down a bit, and stop having fights get away from them, then they'll be in a good spot. But 100 Thieves have that gold advantage still, and they can start making those plays with the, the Lissandra to go to the side lane, lock people down. And it's really 100 Thieves want to press this game with someday's advantage and use who he has a pivot.
Great wards over the wall. Quick undertow follow would be on Demedios here in a second. Looks like they did have the flash there for Big. He gets himself to safety, but it's all the ultimate from Arrow to keep them alive. Top side getting pushed by Crown. This is great yo-yo defense here. The back and the fourth by Optic as they get slow structures oh. across the map. Now very dark is a great job by 100 Thieves to deny vision on the side of Optic's jungle. They're gonna curve around the brush, but they know they didn't have it right away because of vision. Yep. And it all fizzles out. It's just like, just Optic need to take a breath and not take fights that they can't win mm -hmm. and wait for the scaling because the rise is gonna be crazy later on, especially with a cleanse. Locking him down will become difficult and his machine gun main style will do so much. This team that has, honestly, a lot of frontliners, like Olaf's gonna be running yeah. at you, just blow him up. He's not that good in the mid lane. The, the Urgot is the same thing. You have people that you can bounce ease off of constantly yep. and potentially reach midline or backline of the rise. Same thing with the Sivir Ricochet. And it's hard, Zyrian. It is hard to know that has to happen and watch your structures go down. Know you need to back up. You see a fight, but even if it's one person standing there, it's a bait. Don't yeah. take it. You always have to know how much to give yeah. and how much you shouldn't give them. Because if you give them too much, you fall too far behind. And there is such a thing as falling too far behind, even oh, yeah. against an early game composition or an early game focused top side of the map. For a moment, it looked like it happened. 100 Thieves was rolling over Optic and they kind of put that pause button on. They found a, a disadvantage from 100 Thieves uh, engage. So now Optic is slowly pushing those wards forward. I like what Optic, uh, Big and Crown are doing on that top side to ward together. Safety and numbers here as they're trying to get themselves a little bit stronger for that next fight. Yeah, and one of the things I want to look at here is where this gold advantage is, because in the mid lane, it's actually favored for Optic slightly. Mm -hmm. In the AD carry roll, it's even. Supports, I don't really care. Top hey, lane, hey, jump, hey. I don't really care. Top lane, it's 2,400 for Sunday, and then it's about 2,000, it's 1,800 mm -hmm. for Anda. So this whole gold advantage is actually on Someday and Anda, the two guys who were doing work on the top side against yeah. Dokla and Medios. So the rest of the map for Optic is actually fine. And when you're in a game in this Great state, point. it's really Dokla and Medios that are the ones that have to watch out, and everybody else has to kind of play like normal, play a little bit yeah. to try and get something back. So the map is in a good state for Optic. It's an okay state, I would say. It's not great, but 100 Thieves, they have to keep playing through Someday and Anda, or else their advantages don't mean as much, because these champions, especially the Olaf falls off. The Urgot is still serviceable. I love that we had that fight with Someday right there as you're explaining it. Because you're like, across the map, they were even. You're like, Someday is becoming the map now. There is He no, is. Yeah, there's no map to get away from where you're not fighting him, and that's what he needs to do. And if you just look at the item advantage that he has, too, he's literally a full item up. The 2,400 gold, he's got the Gargoyle Stone Plate. He's already got, you know, the Glacier Shroud going mm -hmm. for him. So he's ready to start pumping out like major damage while not taking any himself. And he's focused on shutting down Dokla yeah. and Meteos, whereas he hasn't built really anything for Crown. He does have some resistances from the Gargoyle Stone Plate, but that'll come into effect later. So right now, he's just focused on winning this matchup. Someday is trying to split push his way to a victory, open up the map for his team so they can get this next Infernal Drake, and then they can start opening up the map to get the Baron later really showing strength for 100 Thieves. As we were talking about in Champion Select, they had a composition last year that loved to fight, and then they changed players and tried to insert them into that strategy where you didn't see it working that way. Yeah, it was like the delicate 1-3-1 one, one dance with Ryu and Someday in side right. lanes, and then Cody Sun scaling up, getting all the farm and three man unit. That's not the 100 Thieves, but they're playing like that again here with that exact same setup. But Puhi is losing on the side lane slowly to Crown, so Crown will get some damage and some priority on that side of the map. It's just not the side of the map that they want for Optic. The Infernal Drake is up. 100 Thieves have priority on That's that. Good. And then Baron, is this a Baron rush? Are they trading Infernal for Baron? They have, have a one super mountain damage. break. Super damage Infinity Edge into Rapid Fire Cannon for hers. Good hits there. And it looks uh, like they're going to be doing a hard through Trap Barrage goes across. You're going to get a teleport in and try to stop this fight. That should be... Wait, where's Medios going? Not, That's Bang! Bang! Oh my god! First in the fight and they ran away! They didn't know it was the Marksman! 100 Thieves pulling the trigger on this fight. Now they have priority over Baron. Three members of Optic sit in the back of the pit. Teleport's there for Dokla, but it looks like this one's going to have to go to the wayside. Crown will stay. Maybe a spell flux, maybe something. They are waiting. They have a bit of vision. Realm Warp goes off. They're trying to fake. fake out 100 Thieves. Dokla's there on the left. The teleport was not seen. He's going to enter with World Ender on. They try to sound out a triple knock up to the first one. Who he tries to divide himself from the fight. Baron goes down. Someday's able to get Baron.
Terran. And now it's going to be a resurrection onto Dokla. They're still in the fight, fight and bang. He's able to pull the trigger, does not take him down. Optic running for the hills with the help of Big as he is spitting his teammates out left and right. Is it enough? Big's thrown in. Gray Health comes down, but it's not going to be enough. Oh, he's almost it's dead. the next, the true shot. Or Mr. Oh, 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 oh. This is Bang, but he oh. goes down. The shutdown. Medios is in. You better be paranoid, baby. Who oh, he's on the run. Baron is there, and he is the only member with the buff. Fight is over. Woo! And now see if they get this turret, if they go for the Drake. But that's the Baron buff that's only on Hui at this point. That fight, like you said before, lasted so long. So Medios long. gets back to it. The second time. Woo! Are you in revive? 23 minutes on the clock. This was an inferno that Optic needed. They've been pushed around on the map. They need these objectives. It's the power of Mountain now and the power of Inferno. That was great. You said they needed a few of those lucky spots, Irene, and they just cashed in on a couple. Yeah, this was that TP in. He, it's like when you Ash Arrow and then TP to your own Ash Arrow. He ulties in, goes Meteos is low, target acquired. <laughs> Time to go in, TP's in, Meteos is slowed, and walks by, and then Bang's like, okay, boom, boom. Oh my God, Bang. Picks it up. The ball's oh. on this guy. That, I'm surprised that that actually happened there. But this right here, when they come in, uh, Someday also has Smite. So it's a double Smite to end the Baron. So they're saying rush yeah, the Baron down. Perfect. Smite, Smite. And that was perfect to actually blow it up there with the double Smites. And so they get it. But the thing is, is I love when the engagement happened from Optic. Optic went in when it was about 5,000 HP. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to get it that low. And now they start going in. It's only three people really part of this engagement, so it's a three on three. He's channeling back who he, he was pretty much full HP. I think he still has Ooh. flash. He's still able to get in there. He's like, you guys got this. Who he phoned that in and went back to base. And that's what ends the fight for him. And we're not done, Zyrene. They are already onto that bottom inhibitor, or bottom turret rather, inhibitor is next. And they won't be able to take this one just yet. They're spreading optic thin as they try to go little bits of damage on each inner turret here. Mid lane's gonna go down first. Nice attack. And then 100 Thief is gonna traverse over to that bottom side of the map. The minion wave slowly coming in with the help of Someday. It looks like they're gonna get another second tier turret here. Great job. And now a 4,000 gold lead as Optics creep it up on 41,000. And that's still gonna be Crown in the side lane saying yeah, nobody can really match me. Work. Doing big work. It's just gonna be wave clear versus wave clear. And that's the only Baron buff left for about 40 seconds here. But that Baron power play pretty much even. It's going to be favoring optics slightly because of waves just now. And that's going to be another blue buff going over to Crown since he's on that side of the map. And that's perfect for the rise. This guy is scaling pretty heavily right now. I'm seeing how much gold he's sitting on. He's got 1,500 gold. He He's actually like 200 gold behind Bang, who has the most gold in the game. So he's passed someday in terms of how much he has. And it's, uh, that's the same with Arrow. So there's pretty much two fed carries on the side of Optic. And there's, I would say, one and almost fed for Huhi, whereas Someday is you know, transitioning into that tank mode right yep. now, that bruiser mode. Dokla's kind of the odd man out. He's left out of the gold party right now. <laughs> He's, that's the position where you're on your team. You say, all right, this might be one of those games where I get carried. I'm OK with that. Come on, team, let's go. Yeah. So he can actually become big. He had some great knockups in that Baron fight, entered very well from the, the Fog of War over towards the blue side on his Aatrox of uh, 100 Thieves blue side, I should say. So seeing those things come together means Optic is still willing to take a few chances. We looked at the bottom half of this map to start in Champion Select, and we kind of said Bang and Arrow are two people fans are looking to put on a show, and they've actually been doing quite a bit of work this game on both sides. Yeah, both sitting there at three items, both get that bounty stacking on them yep. with the Marksman. But Arrow's approaching that area where the Sipper does a lot of damage. He didn't even go for an Essence Reaver or for cooldown reduction or double crit in terms of like the uh, double uh, zeal item. He's got armor penetration now because Someday is just so large. Someday is sitting on those three completed items plus boots, whereas Dokla just completed his Yomu's Ghost Blade. So there's this big advantage in the top lane that even though the CS is getting evened up here over time, it's a lot of that structure gold going over oh, and crown. He can't get in. Realm Warp, he gets pushed Medios out. Medios gonna have to Undertow hits, yeah, turning out the lights, and now they're trying to figure out where 100 Thieves is going. They're going on to Medios. Ragnarok's on, but it's only gonna keep him safe for a little bit as it wears off now. Safe from Aphromu. Winter's Bite is back to slow the team down as Bang gets the Frostborn Gauntlet in to slow as well. And where are they uh, heading for this one? 
Yeah, I, Brown's I think... backing up. Doesn't look like they really want this fight overall. Great job with the pushes. Yeah. So, Optic is playing a lot of off the ball moves right now. They start a fight or get a fight started on. They know they can get out and they get something on the other side of the map. Very well done. It's good for Meteos to kind of shroud what was going to happen next. Yeah. It made 100 Thieves back up because they don't like taking those risky plays. But Dokla didn't have teleport. So even if he wanted to, he couldn't get there. So it looked like 100 Thieves might want to take it. But because of that ultimate, yeah. they don't, and they lose that bottom tier one turret. So Optic actually get a little bit more out of it. So it's a 1300 or 3,000 gold advantage right now. The longest 100 Thieves win time for the 2019 Spring Split. 4202. So they actually had quite a good clip and advantage going into about that 10, 15 minute mark. They have been slowed by Optic. I think Optic kind of heard you and they said, yeah, we do need to take a break here. Great job in Arrow and Big to keep the wave pushed and Dokla from staying out of those dangerous positions. And that win time at the top is very important because that is their average win time for the three wins that 100 Thieves has. Yeah. So 100 Thieves are winning late game. They're winning these long games. Our average in the league is about 34 minutes in the LCS come last week. And so this is way above the average in terms of their win time. So the long games seem to favor 100 Thieves Optic were the ones who liked that early game, not in this game, and so they're gonna have to find a way to turn it on in the late game. And I think it's doable with the Rise and the Sivir. 100 Thieves, they have to start making use of this advantage that is slowly getting, uh, in terms of that gold gap, closed. Yep. I love that. Optic realizing they need to take a hit in their best attribute early game to come out stronger in the late game. They have weathered the storms, Irene, and it looks like they can start putting up a few of those numbers that they want. We see Crown always spreading them thin. They might be able to get the 1 3 1 as Dokla gets himself a little more vision towards bot and Crown. He can start spreading it. With Crown. Baron up, that's the objective. Crown has to be careful right now because Crown is actually behind enemy lines in that bush to the left. And the rest of the team is actually surrounding him slowly. If he shows himself okay, on this so way. No end is there. He's not going to show himself. He's got to hold your breath. Oh! He's going to try to. Oh! Ba, 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 ba. Oh, he says, who is he? He goes ahead, throws down his tomb. Will he be in that tomb for very long, though? Nobody's coming to help him. Oh, wow, yeah, they just leave who he out to dry on that Bang's one. Bang's dead, too! Death Bang gets himself in a real bad spot. Over the wall, does he have blast? Still, Realm Warp on the Bang. He goes down, and 100 Thieves just slip up big time as Optic takes control. And Crown sections off a top side part of the map that's in the enemy control. He's like, this is Crown Town. You entered the wrong part of town. Blow Wait a minute. Afro moves very low. Unbreakable's on. They're going to try to get to him now. One more hit. Dokla's definitely got this. Goes for the swing and cha-ching for Dokla. Picks himself up a kill after working hard in the early game. Staying alive for the team. Now they're able to put all those advantages to work. And Baron is picked up by Optic this time around. Crown and Arrow putting people in their backpack right now. Meteos, Ooh. best supporting actor alongside Big with the global ultimates making sure that they're shrouding the kind of engagement that they're having. So it's Huhi, watch this. He has to face check this, or he could throw a Q, whatever, it doesn't matter. He walks up because he thinks it's safe with Anda there, and the minion wave would walk past. Crown just exercising perfect patience here. Anda walks up, says, nope, I can't get in there. The teleport, the surround, and that's a blind ultimate there because he can't see what's happening. Bang, TP'd in while a Nocturne ultimate was covering the entire collapse of Optic there. Optic still very much on their toes after a back-footed early game. 31 minutes in, they're taking down second-tier turrets against 100 teams. Now. Sometimes we see hero plays manifest in a mechanical outplay, and sometimes we see somebody just get a big, wrinkly brain, and they sit in the bush and they go, you know what? This guy doesn't know I'm here. Waits long enough, shows the patience, and the rest of the team was ready to support him. That is the optic teamwork that they've been working on. Like Zabotin said, a slow start, but now it's coming and in, and it's making it work here in the late game. You heard it here. You cannot bring the wrinkly brain to optic. They will disintegrate if you try. Two oceans, though, for 100 thieves, so they can stay healthy. However, they are in their base now, so the fountain isn't too far away for them. Nine to eight is optic now doing a bit of work with a lead. Like we said, if Optic take this, they tie themselves with 100 Thieves in the standings. They need to start moving themselves <laughs> up. Crown, once again, he is being Fnatic by himself in the Fnatic brush. Oh, he gave the minions Baron! He's like, nope, jigs up, I'm out of here. <laughs>
Oh, and someday and who he were walking over. So that's two people actually committed to the bottom side. Oh, man. But there's really nothing they could do about that. I feel like that was one that was just like, you know what? It, it could happen again. Just watch <laughs> out. Just making sure. Now we're running around with, I'm looking at these items coming through. Bang is going to have a lot of damage. He's going to be harder to take down since he's got those resistances. He's got the Hextech Gunblade now. But then you look at Arrow. He still has one item to go. He's got the 50% crit. Yeah. And he's lacking in like attack speed. You know, Sivir will get some from, you know, the R passive and all of that. But the Guardian Angel to make sure he doesn't die for safety, to keep that bounty alive. And then also he's got the Lord Dominic's regards. So a lot of that is committed to AD as opposed to attack speed and crit. So kind of his multiplier stats aren't that high. This isn't gonna be that insane critting every strike Sivir. Yeah. This is one that's a little bit more in the safety department and making sure he can deal damage to that big tank. Arrow likes to be in the fight. He does what he can to keep the damage coming through. Another thing I like about this team is you're seeing with Crown down here, you have Meteos. This guy is supposed to scare the crap out of people on Nocturne. But really, Crown is the one creating nightmares in the bot lane. So they have these two guys popping out of the woodwork at will. And 100 Thieves can't really fight them with one or two people. It takes the majority of the team. And now they're spread thin just across the front of the base, around the horn here for Optic to say one, two, three, if they would like. And look at that bottom turret. That is mainly minion damage here, as Crown has stood at the back and allowed Siege minion waves and other waves to crush it down. Oh, here man. it looks like it's going to be the final stages for that bottom turret. They're not going to go. Nocturne Ultimate goes on oh, just wait. so they can make it happen. They try to go for Hoovy, so they get the crowd control out of the fight and run the members of 100 Thieves into the ground, making sure they don't get their pocket picked. Bang's trying to get up there to reach in, but... It is going to be Optic pulling back safely and using perfect advantages here to get in and out. Yep, slow and steady for Optic. They had slowed the game down enough yeah. ever since 100 Thieves got that early Crazy. lead on Anda and Someday. It's a completely different play style for them. Yeah, just making sure the game doesn't get away from them too far. And Someday, yeah, we, oh, I was going to say, you got to check that bush now every time. Make sure Crown isn't in there, but not going to do it, says, okay, we're fine. And they just have to clear these waves. This this point in the game, 100 Thieves, it goes from bad to worse because now you have this Rise running around with five items or four yeah. items, I guess. Won't count boots for that. We've got one more item to go. Level 18, he's just ready to sling these spells everywhere, and he does so much damage as the 1358 pops up on the, <laughs> on the Grom. He just does so much damage, and he's going to be a little harder to kill. He's got the Cleanse, he's got the Phase Rush. It'd be so hard for 100 Thieves. They have to catch somebody, but yeah. even catching anybody on this team is going to be difficult. You have to worry about the spell shield from the Nocturne. Meteo still has a GA and a stopwatch. You have to worry about the shield from Crown and all that movement speed he'll get. The Guardian Angel from Arrow. It's worth the QSS it. and the, the Gulp from Tom Kench, like right. from Big. This is so hard to figure out who you're going to go on. Yeah. 100 Thieves only have a few seconds to figure out what's the fight going to look like. Well, this game overall was a test of what both crowns could do. And 100 Thieves now winning it at first. They are being put to the test. Watch Crown Crown. In the bot lane, he is already trying to put that on himself. He's got the scepter, he's got the robe, and he is walking through the front door. Realm Warp forward with the minions, so they get a little bit more onto the turret right away in that damage reduction. Uh -oh. And now, it's gonna have to be the slow walk up. The whole team is there, they don't have to worry. You actually have Dokla coming in slow. Crown goes for the shield, the Seraphs embrace as well to keep themselves safe. As Dokla says, I'll keep pushing mid. They wanna work every prong of attack they can at all times. So 100 Thieves cannot bite back. Yeah. Dragon RNG working for Optic as well with the three oceans. That means they're getting Infernals and Mountains next. So they have beautiful dragons to fight for. They got to be feeling good right now. Yeah, and especially since they have three and the Elder's the next one to come online. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so those aren't even out. Yeah. That, that time already. Yep. And, I mean, you're right, though, but because they got an Infernal and they got a Mountain. Right. And having the one versus a zero is more significant than it used to be, right? Mm -hmm. So Infernal, Very first one, so. is no longer 8%. It's 10%. It so they have great. a 10% Infernal advantage there, which is huge. And now Dokla gets to go to the bottom side of the map, bait everybody here towards him. He saw two people. He's like, okay, maybe it's time to go towards that Baron a bit after they get mid-priority. Crown doesn't have his summoner spells, though. That was the one thing that Optic lost, because Crown overcommitted to the Nexus yeah. Rush. And so he had to burn his cleanse and his flash there. He has to be careful, and I don't think he's going to be on split push duty for a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Same thing.
thing happened to him in the beginning of the game. Crown kind of had that unfortunate death as Dokla going solo in the base, takes down a turret for the team. He should be able to get himself out. Baron's gonna spawn. We saw things through shot barrage go across Baron so they know what's happening. They stopped doing Baron. trying to get the shots in and they have stopped. World Ender is on for Dokla. We'll see if he lives on that top side of the screen as he comes back up. Sunday! Oh, chop him up. Takes him down. That was quite easy as he was playing with his food there. Dokla goes down, so Optic, a little bit of more breathing time. They can wait for Dokla to come back up and crown some summoners. Yeah, that was a that was an awkward map position for Optic. I feel like that's one they'll have to review. Because Dokla's on the bottom side. He has TP. He's going straight into the base. He really wants that Nexus turret. Nexus turret makes it so that your next rush is okay. But like, I feel like if you're gonna go for anything, you go for top in him, or you go for Baron plays with mid priority, and they don't do either of those. Crown is on the bottom side. Is Crown, Crown's committing to ending the game. Crown wants to end the game here. He's going in hard. Onda does have the bigger smite if they get Baron, but it's all about what's happening in the base. If they cannot stop Crown, this is game over. Who be doing what he can? Baron's down to 2200. Big picks up Medio. his hero, and they throw it down. Someday getting onto the Baron, and they are gonna be walking out with this one. Resurrection here for Dokla. He goes, or sorry, Medios. He goes down and he comes back up off the GA. Arrow's gonna head towards the top side and 100 Thieves buy themselves a bit of time. This is what 100 Thieves want, but at the same time for Optic, you don't have to be this desperate to end the game. They've shown twice now that they're thri trying to throw the cards on the table and say, we're ending it. Well, Crown got caught, lost his summoners. Dokla ends up dying too on the bottom side and losing his Guardian Angel. And then right there, it's the same thing for Crown where they get the Baron because he's bottom side. He's one of the strongest members. Yeah. No TP. That was he doesn't the, even have it that was on the, his list. That was the easy read bluff. Like, everything's already on the flop. They know you can't have a pair or full house. They're like, we're calling you on everything. Yeah. And Optic got put under the table on that. Still trying to come back out onto the rift so they can reset that vision. They still have some good vision on the blue side of 100 Thieves. And you can see just the gold difference over time and how it has swung. A big roller coaster for Optic. And usually it feels really good when you're going down and fast, but they were in a critical state and are just trying to figure out how to get back to it. Yeah, but it's completely even now in gold, but that Baron power play is still ready to go. And 100 Thieves, they can start poking with the Ezreal, who has a lot of damage now. He's at that six items. He's got that safety too. So Bang may be the key to victory here. Someday in Anna, they carried that early game. But I feel like Bang is the one who's going to have to bring it home for 100 Thieves. And look at where their positioning is shifting. How long has 100 Thieves been in their base on their side of the map? Now they're able to push forward, and Elder Drake is just behind them. This could have been huge for Optic on the three stack Drakes, but now 100 Thieves will have a bit of a chance to toy with it. Crown, again, back to his natural environment. Top lane to push, or at least a solo. Well, I mean, the top lane means that they're going to give up this Elder Dragon. He's going to kill an inhibitor, potentially, who he has Baron buff, so he'll back very quickly. Oh, and oh! Oh, wait, that's the Tom Kent. No, but the boy is now. in! They also had a zipper. Dokla's got to stop him. It's the start of the game. game. Dokla's doing what he can. A nice cross ring coming in from Huhi to try and stop him. His Nexus is getting hit up. Optic can see the win. And Optic take down 100 Thieves. You throw down the cards enough times, oh, oh, oh. eventually it's going to stick. It's, wait, which cards are you playing? I don't know anymore. Oh, they played a good hand there. They waited. They tried Back so many against times. the wall. And yes, they actually tried so many times, but gave themselves enough room as well for the mistakes, which is where 100 Thieves really could have started coming back, and we started to see an inkling of that. I think that's honestly a beautiful win to encapsulate how Optic season has been. They end down in gold, <laughs> they end off of a rush, they tried it so many times. I this like season that. has been them trying but a so lot many times. A lot of hearts, I read. Persistence is the key to victory here for Optic as this five-man roster picks up their first win over 100 Thieves. And that feels good as well for Meteos. A little bit of revenge there on his old team, so that never hurts to have. And look at this, they are elated. Arrow got up, arms in the air, the rest of the team is right there behind, and they all came together. We've kind of been waiting, and we set up for both teams, that a few are showing up, but never everyone at the same time to shine. And this is what we saw from Optics. So right now, we're gonna send it down to Avali for an interview with the victorious jungler. Thanks, Riv. Medios, exciting ending to your first win back at the LCS with Optic. Tell me about that ending moment. Well, the whole game was pretty weird. Um, 
I felt pretty useless the whole game. I was just kind of pressing R so they couldn't see stuff. And we had a pretty good split push comp. And I think it was Arrow and Crown sort of like were talking in Korean, organizing the, the like back door. And they were saying like, okay, they're gonna go for Elder. Like you and Doka just suicide, try to stop recalls and we're gonna end the game. When Crown and Arrow start going and talking to Korean, do you ever feel left out? No, I figure they're talking about something important and I'm just, you know, chilling. Just following orders. Well, you said that the game felt a little weird, and one of the reasons for that is usually Optic is winning in the early game, and then you guys kind of fall off in the late game. But today, you guys were a little shaky at the beginning, and then you ended up pulling off the win. So what was different about today? Well, I think today it was a lot of the champions, because, you know, last week I was playing Olaf, and he's just a very strong early game jungler. So they basically took, like, three really strong safe lanes with a strong jungler, and they were able to get some decent advantages early game from that, but we just felt that our comp scaled a lot better than theirs, so we are basically saying, all right, you know, they're gonna have to keep forcing plays, we'll just play really defensive, we'll farm up, and eventually, like, we'll just be stronger. So speaking to trying to uh, find improvements for Optic, I was talking with Zabotin, and he said that kind of towards the mid game, you guys start to have just a little bit of communication issues. During these kind of tough times in mid game, who is the shot caller and who's leading the team through the game? I think that uh, Terry Big is doing a lot of really good calls. I think he deserves most of the credit for this game. He was just really keeping us together, uh, calling like what they're gonna do, what we should be doing at any given time. So uh, he's been a really big voice on the team. Medios, thank you and congratulations again on the win. And for more on the game, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avli. A big win here for Optic and the Medios uh, version of the roster here up over 100 thieves <laughs> in a messy game, but creative ending Yeah, that, saying the call was suicide for the game end. I love those types of plays, though. They're like, just get in there! Go up the backs! We're going to end it! Those are some of the funnest moments I have in League of Legends. Absolutely hype. Let's take a look at team compositions, though. You heard Meteos talking about it. Strong, safe lanes across the board for 100 Thieves with an early game jungler. Let's talk about some of those lane matchups, the way they played out. Yeah, and I think this was a great game for 100 Thieves in terms of draft and early game play. Like, like that was a good decision. They had a winning top side. They had a stronger 2v2, and uh, it was a very fragile point in the game. You want a one 1-3-1 with Optics comp, but if you're going to lose the early game, 1-3-1 is actually really hard to play from that position. And I think 100 Thieves made all the right plays to win this game in the early game. And I think that's where, from a draft perspective, I know there are some qualms, or we're starting to kind of develop opinions around the Aatrox-Urgot matchup. Yeah, I mean, I think that since Urgot is not yet nerfed on this patch, Aatrox took some big nerfs in the previous patch. I think it is an incredibly hard matchup for Aatrox to win, and I don't even really have a lot of confidence that the Aatrox can even win the, the 1v1 in the side lane later on in the game. I think Crown got a lot of the work to, for them done in the 1-3-1, and I felt like it was much more about their bottom lane and using Tom Kench ultimate really, really well to actually get the 1-3-1 going. We saw someday get off the ground this time around. He even had a nice little play for himself. <laughs> Bring around the Rosie. Oh, my God. God, went all the way to the bot side of the map. I saw Mido starting on the red. I was like, oh no, he's gonna have to run. And then at this point, very rarely in pro game, <laughs> did you see the top laner who already has early kills going into the enemy base through all of their towers? And you see the Sivir on the minimap coming up. I was like, okay, yeah, there's the entire team collapsing on him. But also, 100 Thieves all rally to save someday. Get him out of Our there. Our turrets are still up. There are still up. So are the wards. He's backing on the ward here. Crown comes out and he's like, you know what? Who he's got my back as well. Someday's got a stopwatch, pops that one to nullify the damage of that Q, and then Crown gets chased down and killed as it's well. All planned. That was that was a part of their play. Intelligent. That, that, that was, was, that was the game plan. Yeah. Intelligent play. That was the around the world. <laughs> yeah, really someday, was. someday pulled the around the world off. And that was kind of indicative of like, man, they should really be winning this game. They're killing it. And yeah. so you felt like Optic got forced into these like, well, we're losing the game. We got to make some plays. Let's force a Baron buff because they're running around the map on us. Look at this Baron spit. Oh, yeah. no. It's still hitting no. him. It's still hitting no, him. Oh, no. oh, that's a rough one. Feels bad, man. But the resulting play takes so long that Medios will res, revive, and make his way back to the fight to essentially eliminate all members of 100 Thieves after they secure this Baron. Right, and this is kind of the draft point that we were hitting on earlier. It's like, look at how ahead 100 Thieves are. They're gonna get this Baron despite four people hitting them. They're gonna be able to secure that and turn off pretty well to chunk people low. 
And this is a game that like is over at this point. Like if, if they just backed and recalled normally after forcing them all away, they win the game. No sums, you have Baron, game's over. Or but, even, I mean, if somebody's not going for the, the Kobe Bryant, no look, ultimate <laughs> over to Dokla. I respect there's, it. There's three members. <laughs> look at all how low they were. He was in the middle of the whole team. If, if got that is fear. his ultimate, reactivating that into a fear that is an easy team wipe. Mm -hmm. Instead, I think he was just looking at it like, we're going to win this fight so easily. Who cares? I'm going to try to get that guy too because we're going to kill these three for sure. Instead, they get wiped, and this game was a, a mess. For Media me. said it felt weird. <laughs> yeah, it looked yeah. weird too, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's a good way to describe it. Here we have a big pickoff for Optic in the top lane. This will grab them a Baron and final control over the game. Yeah, and to be fair to Optic, they used their comp super well once 100 Thieves made these mistakes. The 1 3 1 setup with the Nocturne and Tom Kench. Big had a great game being able to collapse in the side lanes, but like, that was still a game you should have lost, by all means. Yeah, and, and I think this goes back to the point that Avali was making in the interview. The idea that statistically and historically this split, Optic Gaming has had a strong early game and they fall down in the late game. This time around, they were down early and were able to come back, yes, due to capitalizing on many mistakes from the 100 Thieves side, but ultimately able to flip the script and kind of win in a different fashion. Yeah, definitely the case. And, and I mean, I think it's it's encouraging for them and to get those contributions, I think, especially from the bot lane and mid lane. Uh, those were really, really standout plays in the side lanes. All right, we're dropping into another break. Meet us back here after the commercial for game two, Team Liquid versus Echo 